An agreement between captains Alex Gidman and Andrew Gale and three declarations has set up the LV County Championship match between Gloucestershire and Yorkshire very nicely going into the last day. The penultimate day began with Gloucestershire batting on in their first innings on 165 for two, with Gidman looking to push on. His partner, Kane Williamson, resumed his innings on 89 and he added to his growing reputation by soon completing his second successive century, having made 128 in his last knock against Derbyshire. This was a sublime innings which had used up 162 balls at this point. For the first time in what seems like a lifetime, the Sun made an appearance in Bristol and Gidman and Williamson batted well enough to take their side to 200 to bring up the first batting bonus point. Gidman had made 26 when he nicked a good one from Tim Bresnan behind at 203 for three. 13 runs later, Williamson was also out for 111. Bresnan striking for the third time in the innings to have the Kiwi taken by Gerard Brophy behind the stumps. There was nothing out of the ordinary going on at this stage as Gloucestershire, now with Hamish Marshall and Ian Cobain at the crease, looking to advance with many wondering where this game was going after only 51 overs had been possible on the first couple of days. Marshall, as he did last week in Derby, looked like his old self as he played some neat shots to prevent an immediate Yorkshire fight back. Cobain also ensured that the visitors didn't make inroads with the second new ball. He was quickly onto anything dropped in short and generally he played in a very positive manner as he and Marshall took the total to 290 before, before a rather dramatic collapse ensued. Marshall had made 47 when he was bowled, just, by Bresnan to end a fifth wicket stand of 74. And Bresnan claimed his fifth wicket of the match when, in his next over, he had Cobain held in a gully by Phil Jakes. Cobain was out for 38. Only one more run had been added when Richard Coftry nicked Stephen Patterson to Gary Balance, who took a very good low catch. Coftry went for a duck, as did Ed Young, who in fact went for Golden as he nicked Patterson to Bresnan. And Gloucestershire had slipped from 290 for four to 299 for nine when Patterson also removed Will Gidman, who was leg before for one, made after 45 minutes of batting. None of this must have been in the captain's plans and rather than searching for the last wicket, Adam Lythe and Gale came on to let Ian Saxoby and Graham McCarter on his Gloucestershire debut hit 52 runs in just 19 balls in what was a throwback to the old days of three-day first-class cricket. The declaration came once Gloucestershire had made 350 for their fourth batting bonus point. Yorkshire then forfeited their first innings, allowing Benny Howell and Chris Dent to use up some time to set up a run chase for their visitors. The calculators must have been out at some point. A third declaration then arrived with Gloucestershire on 48 without loss from 27 overs and that sent Yorkshire a target of exactly 400 in a minimum of 111 overs. That was clearly not going to be easy as both Lythe and Joe Sayers soon discovered as both used the edges of their bats. Sayers had made only the one run when he edged Will Gidman behind with a total on 14. It was now going to be a rather tricky end to the day for Yorkshire. It could have been a good deal trickier though had Jakes not got away with this inside edge which just missed his stumps. So with the weather forecast looking good there should be plenty of entertainment to be had on the last day. Yorkshire go into it having now seen off the new ball on 30 for 1. They require another 370 runs to record their second victory of the summer.